Hello, I am the Board Game Man. The Board Game Man? The Board Game Man! How can I prove that I'm board games? Here's a board game. How can I prove that I'm a man? Here's my male genitalia. But as we all know, my external genital configuration has nothing at all to do with my personal gender identity, so showing you my prime ministerial pork probe does nothing at all to ratify my claims of masculinity. And that's just the first tentative step into the bottomless pond of uncertainty we will be drowning in together. Hello, I am the Board Game Man, and today we're going to be talking about train-themed board games. That's train-themed board games. Board games with a locomotive theme. What do we mean when we say train-themed board games? First of all, let's look at a few examples where we might easily go astray. First up, this is Ivor the Engine, and on the surface it might look like a classic train-themed board game. It's got a train-themed illustration on the box, but I'm here to let you know that this is a train-themed lie. It's a train-themed falsehood, a train-themed delusion, a train-themed mockery, a train-themed flim-flam, because this is not a train-themed board game. This is a train-themed children's television programme-themed board game, and they're completely different. They're as different as chalk and cheese, as, as chalk and bread, as chalk and a stick as chalk and a sizeable piece of cordwood, as chalk and my dead great uncle Harry, as chalk and another piece of chalk from somewhere else that isn't the same piece of chalk. They're utterly different. I don't know how you made that mistake. And frankly, I think there's something wrong with you. Next up we have String Railways, a lovely game about building lovely train networks out of bits of string. But as you can see, there's no board. And if you brought this to one of my board game nights, I would cut you. So, with those common misconceptions out of the way, it's on to the real meat of the episode. Train-themed board games. First up, we have Trains. Possibly the most train-themed board game I've ever seen. Just look at the box cover. There's a train on it. And the word, Trains, so that you're in no doubt as to the contents. The contents are trains. Look inside. Look at these lovely cards. This here is a train card. A normal train card. A normal train. The back bone of any rail network, the spinal column of any rail network, the nervous bundle of any rail network. And with our lovely normal train card, and with our lay rails card, and with our landfill site card, we're going to build a lovely train network all over this hexagonal map of Japan. And once we've done that, we're going to rack up lots and lots of points. And what do points make? That's right, Points make a convenient metric by which to determine which out of you and all the people you know is objectively the best human being. Speaking of points, it's time to Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride is a game about the emotional hollowness of Victorian cultural imperialism as a group of unnamed travellers ricochet from one corner of the earth to another in a meaningless quest to rack up the largest arbitrary travel distance without ever stopping to truly appreciate the different cultures that they're barbarising along the way. It's a little bit like where in the world is Carmen San Diego, except that Carmen San Diego died years ago and nobody bothered to tell you. Or like trains, planes and automobiles, except that all of the planes have been hijacked by Somali pirates and all of the automobiles have been taken into foster care. It's a lot like if Jean-Paul Sartre bought a Europass rail rider and went on a big holiday and wrote a diary of it which he later published in the Guardian Holidays section. Right here we have a copy of 1825, one from my personal collection. 
Due to YouTube's obscenity policy, I'm not able to show you the contents, but suffice it to say, this is a heavy economic engine building game about the economics of building heavy engines. Like most spank bank material, this is from a long numbered series with dozens and dozens of entries, but as you're not playing it for the plot, you can jump in wherever you like and be brought to a shuddering climax. Lastly, but by no means least, we have Snowdonia, a game about building a railway up the side of a Welsh mountain in the rain. And I love it because it reminds me of my childhood. Also, one of the worker pieces that you have starts the game in the pub, and the only way to get him out is to feed him some coal. It's just that realistic. Sometimes when playing this game, I've been so drawn into its verisimilitude that I've fallen into a trance and begun to mistake all the different playing pieces from characters from my actual life. And in this hallucinatory state, I've scented and tasted and made love to the playing board and different contents. And I urge you to go and get a copy and do the same, because as the old saying goes, if you're not able to make feverish love to a children's wooden and cardboard playing toy, you may as well be dead. Music